Bye. 
Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our 5.30 service. Let's all stand together, shall we? We have got some radical ladies in the house who've come from the encounter, and they are still in church and wanting more. I just can't believe that. That's amazing. And also, it's great to see my friend Stuart from Birmingham here. Who else is in the house? Dean's here. Everybody's in the here house. Jesus is here. Okay, Lilith's here, Batwoman is here, she's here, that's great. And Vilma and Darius from Lithuanian Church are here, let's give them a warm welcome. And we know that folks will come drifting in in a minute. Welcome to everybody online, it's so good to have you with us. Why don't we give the biggest praise to God and begin to lift Him up? Come on, let's worship Him as our worship team sing us.
up, shall we? How great is our God? He's an amazing God. Yeah, we love him. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We bless you, Lord. I wonder if, and you might be a guest here tonight, and we want to welcome you if this is your first time amongst us, but and everybody watching online, but I wonder if we could just combine our faith right now. That actually we we pray as one person, as one mind, as one church. I really want you to pray. This Wednesday is when uh, I get to install the new mayor of our uh, borough. And uh, I had to go, go lay hands on him. And that's when he officially starts, but it doesn't start until we lay hands on him. How's that? How cool is that? And so, you know, on Wednesday night at seven o'clock, we'll be having prayer meeting here and I'll be doing that there. But I really want you to join with me and say, we are doing this. Is that okay, church? So I just wonder if we could just take a moment and let's just pray that God would really move in that. Father, we just want to commit this time to you. We thank you for doors that are opening and we pray in the name of Jesus that you will use us as a church in this area. Holy Spirit. I just wonder if you could catch something with me. Lots of people have used the summer for holidays, but you know, in the calendar of the year, the summer is for harvest. I said the summer's for harvest. Amen. And it's a time when folks will be out at night and where the light nights are in and you can invite your friends and all of that stuff. And have a holiday, please. Please go on holiday if, you, if that's what you want to do. But for the rest of this year, we're going to push this service back half an hour for the rest of this summer, sorry, through September. We're going to push this service back half an hour. We're going to start a little cafe beforehand. I can't promise that for next week. We're going to start a cafe. We want you to come and have community. We want to bring your friends. And we're going to do some reach out. But as well as the outreach, we're going to have high praise. Wasn't that great praise tonight? Where you feel like, yay, hey, we're really touching heaven. And we're bringing earth uh, closer to God. We're going to do high praise and then everybody who comes will have something prophetic spoken into their lives. For instance, in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to have an anointing service where we anoint everyone and God draws out your gifts and your ministry. That's on Pentecost night. Next week, we have Trudy Makepeace who's going to share her story. You won't want to miss Trudy's story. Trudy is now an Elam minister, but she's come from a very dark place. And you'll be amazed at the way God can turn someone around. And maybe you can invite some of your friends to see how somebody can go from being a sex worker and a drug addict to Christ. And that'd be an amazing thing. So I, I would just wonder whether or not you could partner with us over the summer and say, you know what, I'm going to build community, but I'm also going to bring some of my friends to church. There'll be praise, the prophetic and then we're going to proclaim the gospel. I wonder if you could kind of believe with me for that. I wonder, if, for those of you who are regular members of KT, I wonder if you just raise your hand with me and ask the Lord and say, God, would you give us a harvest? Would you just minister to us? Would you, would you begin to fill us and let us see people being Christians? Lord Jesus, we just ask you for a move here on Sunday evenings, Lord. Lord, we just bless you and honor you and we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Really just appreciate you. appreciate your faithfulness. And I believe God's going to build something amongst us. You know, thank you so much for everything that you give. You're so generous. And I wonder if we could carry on in our song, song worship tonight. But as we sing, our stewards are going to come and wait on the offering. If you're from another church or uh, you're a guest amongst us, just let the offering bucket pass by. It's our regular members that give to us and uh, give to the kingdom here. But we are so grateful for what you give. I've been saying this all day, but I've been really reflecting on two women in the Bible. One woman poured out her, her perfume to God and it was a year's wages. 
another lady tossed in two coins and yet it was all that she had God very just never looks at amounts he always looks at what we give from our heart so I wonder today whether or not you could say God this is from my heart to your heart the Lord bless you today in your giving if you uh, are here and you've already given electronically God bless you and thank you for that come on let's sing together shall we as we give our offering thank you Lord
lift up the name of Jesus. Let's just lift up Jesus. Yeah, we worship you, Lord. We just bless you, Lord. Lord, we're just here to bless you. We worship you, Lord. We just adore you. Thank you, Father. So good to see you tonight. And we're really blessed to have a special guest with us tonight. Uh, Pastor Wilma is from our Lithuanian church, doing a great work down there over in Charlton and uh, drawing people from all over into their church. She's with her husband, Darius. Is with her. They are great church leaders. And I know that you will just embrace them. Can you give Wilma a real amazing, Pastor Wilma, a real amazing welcome. Come on, Wilma. Oh, you need another microphone, I think. Yeah, you got your microphone. There we go. Um, so, Wilma, uh, please take your seats. Wilma, you're a little nervous because you're speaking in your second language. Yeah. Normally, I preach in Lithuanian every Sunday. You know, if we, if we were spiritual, we would just say, preach in Lithuanian, and God would give us the translation if we were spiritual, wouldn't it? Yeah. But, oh, is it that one? Yeah, it's that one. There you go. Use that one. Okay. Um, but what we're going to do tonight is we're actually just going to pray for you that God blesses you as you speak in English to us. It's so good to see you. Um, come on, let's welcome Wilma one more time. She's just great. Pastor Wilma, I should say. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I ask you that everything that you have laid on Pastor Wilma's heart that we can receive. Lord, we pray for a rhema word into our hearts and minds. Lord, we know that you have given Wilma something for us and we want to receive it. So in Jesus' name now, we pray your anointing, your blessing, and your life in Jesus' name. Uh, KT are a great church to preach to. They really do love the, the word. So God bless you and welcome. Pastor Wilma, everyone. Oh, thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm really honored to preach here. And... I believe today, tonight, God wants to speak to us deeply into our hearts. And, you know, every time we come to church, we have to leave the church with a changed heart. You know, we need to touch his heart and we, then we, we are changed. So uh, when I was preparing and asking God, what do you want to say? Uh, I got a message called Simple Obedience. I said, God, this is my first time preaching. <laughs> who likes the word obedience? Who, 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 who likes, you know, when you, as soon as you hear the word obedience, it's, wow, is there somebody? <laughs> Normally when you hear word obedience, it's, oh, then what to do? <laughs> then it's going to be hard. So, oh, not this way, no. So, but, I'm going to preach about obedience, so in a way to, be, to preach, you have to be obedient, so I'm going to do it. Whatever I have in my heart, I'm going to share it with you. And obedience is not a bad word. Obedience, if you understand where it can take you, what God can do through that, you know, where, uh, what, you can, you, what you can experience, then this word becomes great word. It's, it's just, just give it to me. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do it. Obedience is not the end of the road. Obedience is taking us to the life, abundant life, to knowing more of Jesus, to touch him more, to, to see the miracles, to see the glory of God. This is, this is always 
does that. So obedience is good. Obedience is good for us. And I remember I learned that so early in uh, my just the beginning of uh, walking with Jesus. I became a Christian back home in Lithuania just before I left the country to come here. And uh, I had experience in my room. I actually didn't know what to expect. I, I just tried that night. I was, I was broke and I, I was, I, I just kneeled on my knees and I prayed the simple prayer saying, Jesus, if you are real, if you are real, if you, if you are really existing, please come into my life, help me. First time in my life I said, sorry God for my sin. Because before that night I always been ready to find somebody guilty of why this or that happening in my life. But that night I understood I have my part and I'm guilty and I need forgiveness. I did that night. I said, forgive me, Jesus. I didn't know what to expect. I never, I never been to the church like that. Uh, our country mainly is Catholic country. So the church I went maybe a few times in my life, it was there. So I didn't know what to expect, but I remember this, uh, just suddenly from my shoulders, the guilt, the shame, everything was lifted up and I was filled with, with love and, and this tangible, you, you can feel this. I was crying actually after that two days. I couldn't stop crying because of joy. And I remember after this experience, straight away next morning, I start hearing voice. And I'm saying voice, not voices speaking to me now. This... Uh, these thoughts, you know, these thoughts, I knew it's not, it's not mine, it's not mine. It, 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 it was coming from somewhere from deeper than me, somewhere. It's, it's, it, and I heard this voice saying, take pen and paper and write it down. Uh, intuitively, I knew it's something good, you know, just do it. I took it and I start writing and I start writing poetry. <laughs> I never done it before. I said, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, then this, the same voice, I was thinking, okay, now find the Bible. It was a long time ago, and in my country, uh, to buy a Bible, it is a miracle. You, you can't. It's, you have to find it. You, you can't buy it. So, um, so I knew I need to find this book. And uh, I got it from one of the friends, uh, the New Testament. And I remember reading this book and at the same time knowing that somebody else is with me. You know, somebody who can explain this book, this voice. You know, I knew the presence. I knew I, I'm not alone anymore. And it wasn't spooky. It wasn't scary. It was exciting. I said, this person is good. It's good. I can trust him. I can rely on him. And I want to rely on him. Just lead me. I'm gonna do it, <laughs> I'm excited. And this is how I began. And um, I would love, you know, uh, uh, to say uh, that I never fell down from that part, but uh, if I say that, I will lie to you. I, 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 I was, and it's easy to, to turn apart, uh, to turn away from this part, but we have to understand that the only way to the abundance, to the will of God, to knowing what he had for you is just by obedience, by humility, by submission. And you know, to, to, to obey somebody, you have to trust somebody. If I, if I come to you and say, let's follow me, you know, you don't know me. You don't know who I am. You, know, you don't know my, my intentions. You, probably you will not go. No, no, no. <laughs> but if you, if you follow somebody, you have to trust this person. In order to trust this person, you have to spend time with this person. You have to be with him. You have to communicate. You have to live together. You have, you have to have time together. And more you have time together, more you spend with this person, more you know him and it's easier to do it. And it's excited. This is exciting.
excited part. And sometimes we as the Christians, we make so hard, you know, because uh, as soon as we take the will of the, our car into our hands, and it's really easy to do it, so the Christianity becomes really hard thing to do is burden you know as soon as you know how Christianity looks and what to do <laughs> it's already boring especially for me it's boring no and um, we, we we have to keep this heart humble heart this expecting heart you know rely to relying heart Jesus where are you taking me today what you want me to do, I'm ready. Just take me there. And um, we're going to read um, John 15 from 1 to, to, to 11. But before we read, I'm going to share one more experience um, I had as well. Just like in the beginning, I was already here in England. And I was excited to do God's will. It was a lot of fun <laughs> for a first year I wasn't in the church actually I was born in my room I, I straight away I went to UK and for a year it was Holy Spirit New Testament and me and this is how I learned you know to walk and I remember like things like uh, when we came here we, we, we came to make money, we didn't come here to char start the church. Uh, you know, when you obey God, something like this can happen. I never thought <laughs> that I can do it. I never, I didn't have any, any dream. So, but, and I had a lot of um, quickening in, in the spirit and, and I saw those miracles and was so excited. And I remember, you know, um, in those days, when you, you write the letters, real red letters with a paper and a pen and an envelope. You still remember? You know. Um, so we came here to make some money. You know, we had some plans there. We, we wanted to buy a, a property. We want to start the business. We had short time. Um, and we had to do it. And so... As soon as I came here, I had this, you know, God, God was saying, you know, just write down letters to everybody, anyone I know, the friends, family, to, to, to write the, uh, uh, what happened to me, you know, just, just, to, just, just to share gospel with them. And I started doing, and I remember, as soon as I wrote first letter, Holy Spirit said, and put 20 pounds in it. I said, Okay, let's are fine, but you know, if I put 20 pounds in it, in my account, it's going to be more or less. Less. <laughs> and, um, but I was excited, you know, I knew that if God speaks something, it has to be good. He, he's never robbing, you know, or taking out something. And I start putting every in every letter 20 50 whatever and I you know ascending sending sending and I remember most of those people they became Christians most of them and I remember especially especially remember one lady uh, she said Vilma one of my friends she said uh, I never wanted to read those letters they were silly you know you know I, I was wondering what was, what happened to you you know it's so like Jesus, Jesus, you know, and like you was normal before you left. What happened there? And so, but he said, but I was reading that just because of this money, you know. I, I was reading that just because of this money, and I was waiting for this letter just because of that money. And I remember uh, I got one letter from her, and uh, she was open to me, and she was talking about the suicide and everything, and. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, just help her to come here, just help her. As soon as she came, in, on the third day, <laughs> she gave her life to Jesus. And I understand, Jesus bought her, you know. And uh, for me, I realized my bank account never went down. You know, I was making more and more money. We bought the properties back in Lithuania, just not one, two, you know. Uh, uh, it was 
uh, low price at that moment when we bought all went up uh, then the holy spirit spoke just sell it we sold it everything <laughs> went down but we sold it on the time and i saw this this amazing jesus who is taking care of me i, I put it just 20 pounds you know of course i didn't expect nothing more i said that for me it was just obedience just simple obedience and story after story you can tell to obey God is the exciting thing. Yeah. It's not that. It's really, it's really excited. One of the most important things what is happening when we do that, He is freeing us from us, from our fears. You know, He's freeing us not from the demons, but from us, you know. <laughs> Who is, you know, so it is it is exciting. And mm, mm, I will show one, one, more, one more thing. Uh, I think this one is really important to understand as well, talking about obedience. Um, when we disobey, we have to know that we are grieving Holy Spirit. You know, like when, whenever we disobey, we are saying, we're not saying loudly, but we're saying, we're, we, you are not trustworthy, like you, you, I can't trust you. You know, if you don't obey, you're like, oh. I can't trust you. And it's grieving, uh, Holy Spirit. And um, if we stay in this, in this position of the heart, our hearts become hardened as well. You know, we are in dangerous situation if we do that. And I remember one day um, uh, in the morning, uh, running to my job, you know, to my job. Yeah, I, I think I was a little bit late. And I was eating banana. This experience I had just once in my life, but it, it is enough for me to know what is happening in the spirit, you know. God that day showed me and, 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 and let me, you know, he, 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 he allowed me to feel, you know, to see exactly what is happening when we disobey. I was running to work and, and I was eating banana. I finished eating banana and I had banana, banana skin in my hand and I was looking for a bin to throw it away and there was no bin, you know, I walked like five minutes, no bin. And I decided, okay, I just throw it away. <laughs> I know it's not godly, but it's, I throw, I was, okay, there is no bin, you know, I can't hold this banana skin all my life, so I throw it away. And as soon as I did, I felt, you know, I, I heard Holy Spirit come back and take it. It was just come back and take it, pick it up. And it was so clear. Uh, and it says, it's, it's not a big deal, it's just banana skin. Uh, uh, and I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be late, you know. And I was walking, you know, I, I didn't stop. As soon as they did that, I felt in my spirit, you know, this sadness just filled my spirit straight away, this sadness. This, I felt this grieving, this pain. It was quite painful. My joy disappeared suddenly, suddenly. And this, this, this emptiness started feeling, you know, like it's, it's, I felt that. <laughs> and I thought, okay, this is just this. Skin. <laughs> this, I, I didn't kill nobody, you know. It's like, it wasn't skin. It was disobedience. It was disobedience. I knew, I heard, you know, just pick it up. But I did. And, and, and then, and this is now, it's, it's not just the skin, something else. And as soon as I stopped, I turned it back. Joy and peace. <laughs> it just straight away filled my heart again and I got it and I got it and understood if I want to live this fulfilled this joyful life full of Jesus full of peace I have to follow his rules just just simple obedience doesn't matter big or small to start a church or to pick up the rubbish you know it doesn't matter this is not about that it's about obedience about the heart who is ready to do his will and this is really important to keep that to the end of the life, you know. And so I know uh, when we become Christians, we, we, are, we are new. Everything is new. Everything is exciting. It's, it's quite easy in the beginning, you know. Okay, God, what to do, what to do. And then at some point, some of us becomes, becomes clever, you know. Ah, oh, okay, I got it. 
You know, oh, yeah, I know what is Christianity. Okay, we go to the church on Sunday, the prayer meeting on Wednesday. You know, we pray, we read the Bible, we do good things. Yeah, we tithe, we, we don't sin, you know. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I can do that. Or even I can try to do that. As soon as we come to that place, dryness and unhappiness, emptiness, you know, this flesh, you know, fruits of the flesh starts revealing again. We don't know what Christianity is. You don't know. I don't know yet. You know, I can tell what already, I already experienced. But what is in the front, what, what is waiting for us, we don't know. And this is exciting. Of course we pray. Of course we read the Bible. Of course we go to church. But when we do that, we are waiting on him. You know, we're, we're doing by obedience, by faith. You know, I know that we're going to meet with him. He's going to talk to us. He's going to guide us. He's going to break, you know, whatever he needs to be broken. And so it is, it is exciting to live with Christ. It is not boring. It, Christianity becomes boring. You are already in flesh, back in your flesh. Because we, we are a spirit, but we still have this flesh, you know, this old nature with us, who is proud, who knows everything, who don't like instructions. You know, who likes instructions? You know, when you buy something and you have to go through all the instructions. Yeah, who likes it? Nobody. It's some of you. I never. You just, okay. If, or, or somebody start preaching or saying how or what to do. Says, okay, okay, I've got it. Oh, yeah, I already got it. Okay, enough. Yeah, I'm going to do it. You know, this is all this old man, all this flesh you know, who wants to be boss, who wants to be in control, and he will always will. So we have to guard our hearts. We have to be careful how we live. You know, you don't have to leave this excitement. No, I don't know what next, you know, Jesus, what do you have next for me? And so as soon as you keep that, you know, and, and, and you do your best, you know, you know, obeying and going Wherever he takes you, you will see his glory. You will see miracles. And his burden is light. Yoke is easy. It's not difficult. You know, it's challenging. I know. It's sometimes scary. It doesn't matter. But it's exciting. It's exciting. And so uh, my goal maybe of tonight, you know, just to bring it up, this excitement again, you know, and just this, this uh, uh, desire, Jesus, you know, I want to see what you have for me, you know. Um, we can read this um, uh, Gospel of John 15, uh, from 1 to 11. Um, I know you know it's... Um, passage, but I'm going to read it to you. Um, I am the true wine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You know, whenever you obey, whenever you flow with the Holy Spirit, you always will bring fruit, always. And it's not that hard. It's not that hard. You know, it's, it's, you, you will be amazed what you can do, what God can do through you. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me. Remain in me as I also remain in you. Remain in me is that that mean, you know, remain. Be, um, be humble and know without me, without drawing from me, you will not be able to live. Just remain in this position of heart, like in the beginning, the childlike faith, this dependence. Jesus, if you don't move, I'm, gonna, I'm not moving. You know, if you don't feed me, I'm going to die. If you don't love me, I'm going to die. You know, if you don't give me something, I'm going to die. I, I, without you, uh, you know, I, I can do some things like it can look like Christianity. Yeah, I can, but it's not. You know, I need you. I need, I need you. And so this is the position of, of the heart. 
never go from this place, never. You know, you just be careful uh, when this fleshly, arrogant, you know, man rises again, you know, I know, uh, and he knows everything. So, no, we always, we always um, have to stay in this position. Jesus, I need you. I need you today. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am a vine. You are branches. If you, are remind, you, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away from uh, and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my word remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. You know, I like this part. <laughs> I like this part. Uh, and I remember when I was just, you know, reading first or second time, I said, okay, oh, this is the secret. If you want, if you want your life to be like you want to be, you just, what to do? Remain, okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, more more I lived with Jesus, I understood that less I need and want from the world, yeah. from the things, from people. And it becomes one desire, Jesus, I want you. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter, I'm rich or poor, you know. Whatever happens, I need you. This is the trick. The more you remain in wine, the more you want that. And everything else stand then to the right places, like secondary. If you give something good, if no, good. You know, as soon you know, as long as you are close to me, as as long as I can, you know, taste you, touch you, talk to you, you know, hold you, be close to you. Jesus, I'm gonna be okay. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna be pastor of big church or small church or non-church. It doesn't matter. This is not my desire. As long as you remain, as long as you dwell in this tree, you know, as long as you dwell in his presence and the Holy Spirit's presence, you can't be, you can't be just the same. You, 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 you're going to be more and more in love because he is glorious. He is, he is amazing. He is, he is good. He is, he is beautiful. And you know him, you know, and this is that feeds your spirit. That feeds you deep inside. And you are, whenever you, when you are full, you know, whatever happens, you know, whatever devil or anybody presents to you, you're going to be okay. You can resist. You can say, okay, I will ask Jesus if it is his will because I'm okay. I'm okay if, you, if, if I'm going to be married or single, uh, if I'm going to have children or not. It doesn't matter. That does not matter when you are close to him. Then if, if you go apart, if you start feeding on something else, you know, this fleshly desire. So of course, everything changes. We can move from one to another very quickly, actually. And so... Um, Whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. <laughs> now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that joy may be complete. Um, uh, as soon as, you know, as long as we remain uh, in this you know, doing God's will, you know, obeying his commands. You know what happens and you know what happens. We see his glory more and we become in love more. Amen. You know, we come to the branch, 
We know that we are accepted, we love, loved as we are. We are righteous because he done it, not, not we. And so we come by grace to, his, to this branch and we stay there and we dwell there and we eat on this and we, we drink that. We, we know Jesus, I need you, I need you in the morning, I need you afternoon, I need you in the evening. Jesus, where are you? I miss you. You know, as soon as I uh, wake up in the morning, one of the first words of mine, I miss you, Jesus. I miss you, and I really miss you. You know, whatever happens that day, if, if, if I don't feel his presence, like feel not, not, not necessary, you know, the, the feelings we think about, but I know, you know, I have to be close, you know, and, and as, as soon as we, we, we touch him, you know, we have, uh, we're ready to go. You know, we're ready for a day. We're ready to obey. You know, obedience is, is not natural for us. You know, uh, dis disobedience is more natural for us. But as soon as we touch him, something happens. Our spirit wants to do that. You know, it's excited to do The faith rises. You know, we know that the Holy Spirit takes us to the places and we're ready to explore. We're ready to go. We are excited. We're, we, we, Jesus, what? And when we do it, we experience his glory, you know, his, the miracles, his majesty, and we love even more. I said, Jesus, thank you. What is next? And this is the cycle. <laughs> we go. I know, I know sometimes uh, we do mistakes. We think that this is God, but this is me. It doesn't matter. When you have this heart, Jesus, I want to do your will. It doesn't matter. Anyway, he, he, he will teach you and repair. If you, if you do some mistakes, this is the main thing, this desire. Jesus, I want to follow you. I don't want to become so smart that I don't need to ask you. And I remember, you know, even the small things, Jesus, what to wear, <laughs> especially for ladies, you know, uh, you open the wardrobe and you say, oh, there is nothing to wear, <laughs> especially in England, you know, everybody's poor, <laughs> just, yeah, you know, why not to ask, you know, ladies, I, I will advise you, just ask in the morning, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what you wear? And you will put aside a lot of burden, you know, maybe this, maybe that, maybe that. You take, you take all the wardrobe, you know, out and then back, you know. Now just ask and you will guide him. And, and he will guide you, you know, and you will see, you know, when you go shopping, you know, never just go shopping. You know, always go with the Holy Spirit. You have to know when to shop, where to shop. Otherwise, you're going to spend money you don't need to spend. You waste time. You, you come back tired and unhappy. You know, you find nothing or you spend too much in every little thing. You know, just, just ask, talk to him. And this is, this is not the big deal. You know, even if you do a mistake, it doesn't matter. But this is how you learn to rely on him, and then big things comes, and they will. The trouble will, you know, the, the difficult situation will. You, you're used to it. You know his voice, and it's going to be not too hard. And say, so, Jesus, what is happening now? I had those situations, like, like uh, uh, I remember our son, he went, uh, grown up son, he went to the beach with his friends, and he just disappeared. You know, his, his phone was switched off. You know, we couldn't find him anywhere. What to do? You know, mothers understand, fathers understand, you know, the darkest night of your life, what to do? But I knew the Holy Spirit, and I asked him. I, I went straight to him. I said, Jesus, what is happening? Holy Spirit, what is happening? And I knew that he knew. Everything is okay. Sleep well. It's all okay. It's like when you, when you have this muscle already, you know, grown, it's, it's not that, it's really, it's really, it's not difficult. You don't have to wait, you know, I'm going to pray now and fast for a week just to hear God's voice. No, he's there. He's there. Just be be willing to hear and do, you know, if you are not 
you know, if you don't have this heart to do it, you know, it's no wonder that God is not speaking. If you, if you were, you know, if I knew that Darius will never do it what I want, I will not ask. You know, God knows, <laughs> and if you don't have this heart, you know, Jesus, what do you have in mind? What do you have on your heart? So no wonder then we don't hear. But whenever we come to that place, Jesus, I'm in your hands. I'm ready to do your will. Just take me, Jesus. Just take me, Lord. Wherever you want, you may be going to start church like me. <laughs> you know, we never thought about that. This is the, one of the biggest miracles in my life. Uh, maybe you're going to preach like I'm doing. You know, I always was afraid of people, you know, uh, standing here. It's, it's so scary. <laughs> but if God calls you, you can do it. You know, <laughs> I don't know what, what can happen. You know, everything is possible when you believe and follow him. I'm going to stop here. And so I want to pray for you and with you. And with those listening. Jesus, we come to that place. And we ask you, Jesus, just to search our hearts. If this childlike faith is not there, please forgive us and help us to return to this place of obedience, just, just abiding in you, just listening to you, just willing to do whatever, whatever you have in mind. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And I feel in my spirit that there is somebody, you know, uh, maybe you did a few mistakes by learning, you know, to obey his will, to do his will. And you was hurt, like it was painful. And something happened in you, like you, you are afraid. You closed your heart. And you go just through motions. I believe Jesus wants to heal you today. Whatever happened, whatever happened, Jesus is calling you again to, this, to start this journey again. Just forgive yourself, forgive others. And you know that Jesus didn't finish his work in you and through you. He's inviting you again. Just stand up. Just stand up. No more sitting down. No more just watching others going with God. No more. Stand up and walk with him again. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that this life and boldness Feeling again this heart, Lord. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. And I pray for everybody, me included. May this desire, this excitement to follow you will be refreshed. Lord, thank you. This expectant heart refreshed again expected heart Lord Jesus thank you whatever you have this evening or, or tomorrow or after tomorrow I want that Lord thank you thank you Jesus thank you for your presence here now Lord Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence here. You're welcome here. You're loved here. I know this revival will not come through one man or two people. 
and gonna come through church through everybody responding to your call responding to those little details thank you lord thank you jesus and any demonic spirits who come against our mind and bringing fear and lies in the name of jesus let it go thank you lord thank you holy spirit thank you for new beginnings thank you for new song thank you for new words thank you for creativity thank you jesus thank you i will ask you to stand if you will i don't know we're gonna be still worshiping But just before we do that, just shall we, can we stay a little bit quiet in His presence and just listen? Just open your heart and listen. And if there is any anything, something, is have to be done. Let it go. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are good. You are faithful. You are for us. There is somebody who always, you know, especially when you hear words like that, you know, the Holy Spirit speaks and takes to the places. You feel unworthy. You always feel like you are not worthy to be, to be used, you know, that you look down on yourself. I want to pray for you. I break this lie. In the name of Jesus. And I ask Holy Spirit to open the eyes to see, to see Himself as you see. Thank you, Lord. Just I'm asking for your presence. Just touch Him. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. And you have to know he wants he wants to use you you have this calling you have this plan of god you will see you will see in, in, in something strong in you you have to be released that's why enemy was so hard on you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know what I really like about tonight is that Wilma's tried to say, hey, obedience isn't something that we should not want to do, that actually it's exciting, it's great. It's actually a positive thing, it's a, it's a joyful thing. I want to ask you for a simple act of obedience. 
I wonder if tonight that we could just gather at the front as a family and just come and bring our lives to God and say, God, I want to obey you. I want to, I want to be with you. I want to abide in you. Why don't you just leave the seat where you're standing and come, let's just gather as a family, shall we? And just say, well, God, I'm just presenting myself. There's just as many of you as you want to come and can come. And we'll pray with some of you in a few moments, but then let's just worship together as a family, shall we? And you know, if you were that person who, you know, you don't feel worthy, come, you're worthy, it's okay. The blood of Jesus makes it so. Come on, let's, come on in. I'm not that scary. Not really. Let me climb up here. Oh, I did it. Come on in. And what you're saying is, I just want to obey you, Lord. I, I just want to, I want to abide in you, Lord. I want to be with you, Lord. Because obedience isn't heavy. As Wilma said, Pastor Wilma said, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Holy Spirit, he just wants to minister deeply to you. And now we've gathered as a family. Shall we worship together as a family a little bit? As Rosemond and the team uh, lead us, let's just worship together in simple obedience together. And we'll hang around in a minute and pray for a few folks. Thanks, Rosemond and worship team. God bless you. Let's worship him, shall we? Abiding in him. Yeah, come on, church. Let's worship him together.
Obedience is fun. It's challenging, but it's life fulfilling. Stop holding out on God. Stop wrestling with Him. Stop negotiating with Him, but simply flow with Him. Flow into what He wants you to be. One more time, just lift your hand with me. Holy Spirit. May we, may we, Lord, just obey you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Jesus said, abide in me. Do you abide in me? Ask whatever you will. I just really want to thank you for being with us. If you're joining us online, we're going to go offline right now. And uh, for those of you who want to hang around and we'll just pray for you, we will. But keep this spirit of submission. Let's thank Pastor Wilmer for this message, shall we? thank you tonight because tomorrow wherever I'm wearing I'm going to say hey Jesus chose it yeah, that's fine and uh, but go with this sense of I want to obey you Lord because obedience is fun it's challenging but it's the right thing to do God bless you have a great evening safe journeys home if you want to stay around and pray that's fine God bless <laughs>